All right, Shalom, Shalom. Haven't been out here in a few weeks, you know, between lockdown and pollen and shit. Ain't been able to come out, but, um, you know, the spirit got me out here right now. So, Lord willing, we finna bring it out, you know. As always, first and foremost, I give all honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, Bashem Rukakodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Shalom to the whole full elect. Peace, mercy, and blessings to the house of David. Damn. Last time I was out here, you know, these 5G uh, things wasn't here, but now they got the little 5G things here. And you know, I'm just gonna flow through the spirit. I'm not gonna bring out anything particular. We're just gonna go through the spirit. You know, on my way here, I saw, um, I saw this uh, so-called white woman, you know, coming out in, um, she had on these these goddamn yoga pants and the ass was looking good, man. But it was vexing though, man, because I'm tired of seeing fucking yoga pants, man. I'm tired of being able to see a woman's shape, you know? Because if we were in in, in in the times of old, you know, it wouldn't be no such thing as a woman walking around with her ass being, being able to be viewed like that. And even though, you know, yoga pants doesn't mean necessarily that you naked, it's just the fact that people can see you damn near naked. They can see your whole shape. You know, they know exactly what you look like if you're walking out of here with fucking yoga pants, man. You know, and that's that's one of those those vexations that come with being, you know, and the truth being in this kingdom. Matter of fact, let's start there in the book of uh, Ecclesiastes. And Lord willing, you guys can hear me. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7. And I hope it ain't too windy out here. Chapter 7, verse 7. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad, and a gift destroyeth the heart. The scripture says, surely oppression maketh a wise man mad, man. And in this kingdom, we're oppressed. When I say we, I'm speaking of you Israelites, you tribes, all right? Levi, Benjamin, uh, Judah, Ephraim. Issachar, you so-called Hispanics, so-called Native Americans. All right, you West Indians, you Haitians, you Negroes, you Blacks, you African Americans, you are oppressed here, man. You know, and you guys are okay with your oppression because you're too, too damn stupid to know that you're being oppressed. And a lot of you know that you're being oppressed, but the Lord got you blinded to where you can't come and, and get this understanding and, and repent so that you can be converted and be healed, man, and be delivered, man. You know, it says, surely oppression maketh the wise man mad, man. Let's go to uh, the book of Peter. This is our uh, second Peter's. You know, you should be upset. You should be angered when you see women out here in fucking yoga pants, man. Just just getting abroad free, uh, free and, and uh, willfully, man. That's wickedness, man, because more than likely, this was somebody's girl I saw, man, you know? This was somebody's woman. I'm able to see every little curve in her damn ass, man. And that's another thing, women in fucking pants, man. You know? This, this shit, man, it's crazy, man. Babylon the Great, man. Confusion. This is 2 Peter chapter 2, verse, verse 7. We'll start at verse, uh, verse four. For if the Most High spared not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness, which is where we are now. We've been cast down to hell, which is this, this current uh, rulership on the planet. In these chains of darkness, these bodies, man. They get old, they get fat. You get tired when you go up a flight of stairs. You know, they stink, you know, they die, they're, they're, they're feeble. You, you get hurt easily, especially the older you get. And deliver them into chains of darkness to be served unto judgment. And we're here awaiting judgment, we're awaiting, you know, the judgment of, of the, the wicked, the judgment of the righteous. We're just, awa we're just waiting right now, man. This is a, a patient a waiting game right now. Verse five, and spare not the old world but save Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, 
bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. And even in that time, you had Noah, who was a preacher, okay? He was prophesying because preaching and prophet, you know, that goes into the same thing, man. He was a prophet of, 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 uh, of, of righteousness, man. And the, and the Lord found favor in him, man, and he spared him. And, 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 you know, through Noah and his sons and their wives, you have the repopulation of the planet through which everybody you see walking around this earth today descend from Noah and, and, and his seed, his three sons. And that same thing is going to happen again, man. All right? The, a, a mass judgment is going to come on the earth and there's going to be a lot of people that die, the ungodly. You know? Verse, verse uh, 6. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after shall live ungodly. So the Most High made Sodom and Gomorrah an example. All right, we supposed to, people are supposed to reflect and think about Sodom and Gomorrah and say, oh no, I see, I see America pushing that Sodomite agenda. Let me not partake in that. Let me not, let me not sleep with the same sex. Not, not, let me not even be be friends with this with people who are cool with sleeping with people of the same sex. Shit. All right. Verse seven. And this is the point. And delivered just lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. The Most High delivered, you know, just lot. And that and that's that's uh just you know a lot. Lot was a just man. He was a righteous man. In the sight of Yahweh and Yahweh, man. In the sight of Yahweh, man. So he delivered, you know, Lot. And through Lot, just like the days of Noah, you had his daughters who were delivered as well. And it could have been his wife too, but she looked back, you know. And it said that he was vexed with the, uh, the filthy conversation of the wicked. And when you go into that word vexed, it means it goes into oppressed, man, oppression. You know, he was oppressed by what? The filthy conversation of the wicked. And when you go into that word uh, conversation in the Greek, it's uh, anastrosphe, which means uh, it goes into uh, behavior, conduct. So you had you had uh, Lot back in that time who was who was vexed by the con the conduct and the behavior of the people of that time, man. And that that's us today, man. We're vexed by the conversation, the behavior of of these people, man. You know, it, it vexes us, it oppresses us, it, uh, it aggravates us, man, you know? And that's why, you know, everything is, is a constant recycle. There's no new thing under the sun, man. And I'm going to get that real quick. This is uh, the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3. chapter 3 verse 15 that which have been is now and that which is to be have already been what's up sir what's up bro what's going on? yeah man you good i see you wrapped up man you ain't gonna let nothing get in your body is you Dang, i feel I'm you up like a huh I'm wrapped up like a <laughs> that's right all right you too man you got jake you know got his whole goddamn mug wrapped up you know <laughs> Hey, it says, and the Most High requireth that which is past. So, again, verse 15, that which have been is now, and that which is to be have already been. So, again, that which has been has already been. Let's go to chapter 1, verse 9. The thing that have been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. So, just like uh, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh brought judgment aforetime, like on uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, he, he, he fucking destroyed that place. He's going to do the same to America. It just seemed like it's not happening, you know? It, it seems like the Lord is slack concerning his promise. But we know that he's not. Verse 8. For that righteous man dwelleth among them, and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. So you see, their unlawful deeds, their unlawful actions, that goes hand in hand with what I said about the uh, conversation. How conversation goes into your behavior. It, it don't just mean, you know, what you're saying. Even though in, in this world, especially in Babylon the Great, you got a lot of uh, filthy conversation, right? 
by way of the mouth, but it goes into your actions, man. So we're vexed, you know. We're I, I'm vexed by the, by the filthy conversation of the wicked, man. You know, and that's why uh, the Lord said uh, uh, the men that sigh and that cry. Let me get there real quick because what's happening is you have a men, you have an elect on this earth that's sighing and crying. That's not cool with this earth, man. Not cool with this world, rather. This age, this this current rulership. This is uh, Ezekiel chapter nine, verse four. And the Lord said unto him, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. So the angels were told to go amongst the Israelites and set a mark, and that, that word mark in the Hebrew is tawah, which means a, a mark of exemption. So he was told to put a mark of exemption on the, the men that sigh and that cry, man, all right? You know, uh, uh, so that so that they could be exempt from the destruction, because when it's time for for everything to, to, to be destroyed here, all right, the Lord is gonna destroy it by way of the holy angels, man. The, the angels are the ones that's holding back the the winds of destruction at this moment. And I'm gonna get that. What's up, bro? I'm gonna get that in the book of Revelation, chapter seven. This is uh, the book of Revelation, chapter seven, verse one. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds and the, and the winds going to the destruction. All right. Um, uh, that ties into uh, Jeremiah chapter 51. That the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And the ultimate wind is going to be the nuclear missiles, man. When, 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 when these nations fire off those missiles, that's going to be the ultimate wind. That's going to be the seventh trumpet. The seventh trumpet that's uh the seventh trumpet that's spoken about in the book of Job. Verse 2. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living power, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our power in their foreheads. So that ties into the book of uh Ezekiel chapter 9. Alright, sealing. You know, selling uh, the elect, selling those, those, uh, putting those, those marks of exemption on the men that sigh and cry. All right. And we're being sealed right now with this knowledge, wisdom and understanding with the names of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah, because those are the names that are going to be necessary for salvation. You know, these these people think uh, 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 if anything happens, they can just call on Jesus. They can just call on Buddha, Allah. They can call on uh, Yeshua, Yahweh, Yah. Those are not the names needed for salvation. And people are going to see that in real time, man. That's part of the, the sealing. That's part of being sealed in the foreheads, man. Verse 4, And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there was sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. And we know that the children of Israel, or the sons of Israel, the sons of Jacob, are the chosen tribes, man. And today... They would be uh, known as Haitians, uh, Panamanians, Brazilians, African Americans, Puerto Ricans, Haitians, Dominicans, as well as those that have been scattered to the to, um, uh, to the other nations that look like the other nations. You're gonna have some uh, Israelites that are gonna be saved that would be labeled as Caucasian. They would be labeled as Chinese. They would be labeled as Japanese. They would be labeled as uh, Kenyan, as 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 Nigerian. As, 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 as Dutch, all right, as, uh, as Irish, man. That's why it's all about walking in the spirit because if you go by the flesh, you're gonna be uh, deceived. You know, this is a spiritual doctrine. This is uh, book of 1 John chapter four, verse one. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit whether they are the most high. Because the Israelites have a, a, particular, a particular spirit. You know, the Israelites have a spirit of, uh, of, of the most high, man. We have a, we're, we're the salt of the earth, as the scriptures say. So, you know, we, we, we're, we're very charismatic. We're very talented. You know, we're very original, man. And you can find that spirit not only in so-called blacks and, and Hispanics. You can find that spirit in so-called white people. Just like, look at Eminem. Eminem can flow his ass off, man. 
and he would be labeled as a so-called white person, right? And there's plenty, plenty other examples. You got Bruce Lee, you got China Mac, all right? They, these are so-called Chinese people, right? But look at the spirit on them, man. Everything about them says, this is not a so-called Chinese. This is not a Moabite, man. This is a uh, Israelite, man. And that's what it's all about. You gotta try the spirit. the book of Isaiah chapter 24 of Salakia chapter 14 verse 24 the Lord of hosts have sworn saying surely as I have thought so shall it come to pass and as I have purposed so shall it stand so I bring that out to say you know I'm thinking how I'm in Atlanta man and Atlanta is now opened up or whatever man so people you know it's like in my field we're able to go back to work like I'm, I'm supposed to go back to work next week you know so, you know, people are already in their minds. Some people are already like, okay, well, it's over. This thing is over. It's beginning to be over. But Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, as he said, saying, surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And his thoughts is, is, in, is in his book, the Bible. And his thoughts are coming to pass. Just like even right now, everything is, is uh, shut down. Everything, you know, the, the streets are quiet, you know. Everything is uh, slow, man, slow motion. You know, uh, small businesses are done, you know. Things are not going back to what you call normal, you know. Because these are all a, a part of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai's thoughts, his will. And eventually, things are going to have a, a sense of normalcy, man, because, you know, you have different things written, man, because uh, 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 as the elites, you know, uh, push to, to bring in their new world order enterprise, they're going to have to have a system uh, in place for everybody to go back to. You know what I'm saying? So things are going to get a, a sense of normalcy. All hell is going to break loose too. But still, things are going to have a sense of normalcy. You know, people are going to get back to work and things like that, even though shit going to be weird as hell. You know, things are going to be things are gonna be super weird you know you know people are gonna have to maintain distance you ain't gonna be able to shake hands or whatever the hell going on you know when people do which I never was a fan of shaking hands anyway but things are gonna be uh, you know things are gonna you know work is gonna open back up but what I believe through the spirit is there's gonna be uh, the, the next wave of the coronavirus which is really gonna crank things up into the next gear of prophecy you know I believe that is gonna be the I believe that's going to be the, the next wave that's going to really push prophecy because through that, then they can really force, you know, have a justifiable reason to force, you know, these vaccinations and, you know, the, this chip and, and this grid because they still getting 5G towers and shit together. They ain't even got all the 5G ready. So we know it, this ain't it yet. We know we still got more time, you know, and I was watching a video today and Bill Gates was talking about how how um, it was on MSNBC, you know, Bill, he was being interviewed and he was saying how the vaccine is coming, coming together very quickly, you know what I'm saying? And I was reading the comment board and you got a lot of people like, what the hell does Bill Gates got to do with a vaccine? And it's a good point. And that's something that brother's been saying through the spirit. What the hell do uh, 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 Bill Gates have to do with a damn vaccine and, and, and with health and, and shit? And people was bringing up the point that he was like, uh, he was like, you know, uh, he, the, the fact that he wanted to uh, depopulate, he was pushing the, 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 the spirit of depopulating the earth. And people, people say the file, people know that. People recall when he was saying that, when he was saying that. So, you know, and that's the tongue of the wicked falling upon him. Because people are not, are not dumb. I mean, of course, a lot of Israelites are, are stupid. Even, in the, even the Most High said that, but a lot of people are not, are not that stupid, especially Edomites. Edomites are very, for the most part, hip to a lot of shit, man.
This is uh, the book of Psalms, chapter 21. Verse 11. And it reads, For they intended evil against thee. They imagined a, mischief, a mischievous device, which they are not able to perform. So this is going into the heathens, you know, Bill Gates and, and the rest of these, uh, these elite Edomites, you know, the tribe of Amalek. They're, uh, they're, they're, they're imagining a vain thing, you know? And through this COVID-19, this coronavirus, they're gonna use this to uh, propel and push forward their agenda on the masses, uh, especially you Israelites, man. Let's read that again. Book of Psalms, chapter 21, verse 11. For they intended evil against thee. Against who, you Israelites? They imagined a mischievous device which they are not able to perform because Yahweh Hashem is going to step in uh, when, he, when he's about to fill his, be his belly, as written in the book of Job. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get that. This is the book of Job, chapter 20, verse 22. I'm going to start at 20. And I'm going to start at 19. Because he hath oppressed and hath forsaken the poor, because he hath violently taken away a house which he builded not. And that's even America, you know. He took, the, he took America from the tribe of Gad. You know, this is, this is so-called Native American Indian uh, territory. And then he used, uh, he used the Israelites, he used uh, us to build this place up, man, for him to get the glory, right? Verse 20, surely he shall not feel quietness in his belly. He shall not save of that which is desired. There shall none of his meat be left. Therefore shall no man look for his goods. In the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in straits. Every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. When he is about to fill his belly, all right, when he's about to, you know, achieve his new world order, you know, he got people, you know, a lot of people are dying off. A lot of people are getting chipped, you know. Everything is looking good. You know, he, he, he's, uh, he's, he's toasting with his fellow elite Edomites. You know, they think they got it. They think they won. When he is about to fill his belly, the Most High shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him and shall rain it upon him while he is eating. <laughs> so yeah, so so uh, Esau ain't gonna even get to uh, enjoy the fruit of this new world order. Hey, what's up? You know? You missed us? <laughs> so yeah, that's saying that you know when the so-called white man and his his new world order enterprise when, when he when he thinks you know it's successful he think he done did it he done got a lot of people chipped he done killed a lot of people right he he, he he's in the zenith of his new world order. Next thing you know, Yahweh Shai is going to put it to a disappointment, man. Let's go to the book of James. Because everything that they stole from us is going to be given back to them. James chapter 1, verse 16. Let's read that. 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 Next thing you know, I got somebody coming out here listening and it's getting loud as hell, man. That's crazy. All right. Go to now, ye rich men. Weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. And that's going into the elites of the so-called white man. That'll be your, your, your Bilderbergs, your, your DuPonts, your Gettys, your Oppenheimers, Bill Gates. All right. Uh, 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 what's his name? Um, George Soros. The Rockefellers, all these these uh, these rich white families, these international bankers, that's who that's talking about. For miseries that shall come upon you, your riches are corrupted because they, they, they gain these riches by deceit, by corruption. They didn't work hard for these riches. They stole everything, man. And the Most High gave it to them pursuant to the book of Job, chapter 9. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are, are, are moth-eaten. 
your gold and silver is canker, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you. Because when the Most High sent his son back, all right, he's going to find the Edomites with all these possessions in their property. I mean, with, yeah, with all of these possessions, all these riches in their uh, possession. And that's going to be a witness against them. How did you get this, Esau? What you doing with all this, man? You know, just like even with this whole lockdown situation. Amongst this whole lockdown situation, a lot of resources were taken from the middle class, man. A lot of people got fucked during this, uh, during this lockdown, man. A lot of people, man. A lot of people ain't gonna be able to bounce back from this. Read it on. Verse three, again. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you. And the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heat. She was out here. Uh, she was out here the last time I was out here, man. Listening, you know, she seemed to be sincere. You know, clearly she's homeless, but she, she come out and she just listening. She, you know, what I'm saying, quiet and it's all good, man. You know, if she's sincere. You know, may the Lord be with her. And shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Behold, the fire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields which is of you kept back by fraud crieth and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the lord of sabbath oh so the lord is hearing our cries man he's hearing our prayers man that's why he's answering by way of these plagues all right matter of fact from there what does it say in second edges chapter 15. It says here in 2nd Edges chapter 15, verse 8. I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and the righteous blood crieth unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. You know, so that, that ties into that. Yah Bashim Yahushai hears the prayers of the righteous, man. You know, and that's written in uh, the book of Proverbs. It mentions it mentions things like that. How you know the the, uh, the ears of the Most High is open to the to the uh, righteous. Verse uh, five: Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth, and have been wanton. Ye have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. And that that the word nourish goes into fatten, man. As it said in Genesis, how Esau would be given the fatness of the earth. Verse six, ye have condemned, what's up bro? Ye have condemned and killed the just. Who are the just? The Israelites, man. The Lord's chosen, man, the apple of his eye. You have killed us. You have gave us uh, unrighteous, uh, you have per uh, persecuted, persecuted us by way of unrighteous decrees. Ye have condemned and killed the just, and he doeth not resist you. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord, because the Lord is going to put all this shit to naught, man. He is going to fix all of this, man. The Lord is the, he is the solution to all of our problems, man. When the Most High sent Yahweh shot back, man, <laughs> that's, that's it, man. That's it. Be patient, therefore, brethren, and unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth. <laughs> and we are those precious fruit, uh, those precious, uh, that's a tongue twister. We are those precious fruits. Adawan Ratazah, all right? And that ties in, uh, ties in with the book of Second Edges chapter 16. No, Salakia chapter nine, I believe. Yeah, Second Edges chapter nine, verse twenty. So I considered the world, and behold, there was peril because of the devices that were coming to it. So we, we, you know, those perilous times are coming, as it says in the book of Second Timothy, right? Verse twenty-one. And I saw and spared it greatly, and have kept me a grape with a cluster, and a plant of a great people. So the, the grape with a cluster would be uh, the Israelites, man, the elect of the nation of Israel. And I saw and spared it greatly. 
and I have kept me a grape of the cluster and a plant of a great people. All right, so back in the book of uh, James, chapter 5, verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waited for the precious fruit, that cluster of the grape, of the earth, and have long patience for it. Because Yahweh Shai is waiting. He's ready to get back here, man. You know, the, the, the vengeance is, is in his heart, as it's written. Let's see if I can get that real quick. Yeah, this is uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 63, verse 4. For the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeemed has come. So uh, the day of vengeance, man, you know, Yahweh Shah's ready to get his get back, man. Because you fucking jakes, you two-thirds, right? And you uh, you damn heathens, you put our hands on our Lord. You put your filthy, disgusting hands on our Lord. You crucified a just, righteous, innocent man, man. So, so, so. In, in the spirit world, that being two days ago, this this thing is fresh on the Lord's heart, man. It's fresh on his mind. He ready to get back here and get busy on you devils, man. And when I say you devils, I'm speaking of you jakes too, because as it's written in John 8, 44, ye are of your father the devil, man. All right, back in the book of James, chapter 5, verse 8. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. So... You know, the day of the Lord is, is near, man. It's very, it's very near, man. You know, and, and people are getting these revelations that, that it could be so, but they, they so bugged out and the Lord ain't dealing with them that they can't repent. They can't get it. But they know that people know in their hearts that we're in the last days, man. Even those who say that they don't believe in the Most High, they don't believe in the Bible, they know that, that there's something very strange about what's going on right now. They know that these are the last days, man, you know? Go to the book of Luke. Because as it was saying that the day of the Lord is near, this is a... Uh, I'm going to get it in the book of Matthews. Matthews 24 instead. This is uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 37. I'm going to start at 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in those days they were eating, they were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the son of man be. And there's, there's a movie called Noah. You know, in that movie, it, it, it gave a good illustration how, uh, you know, after those 120 years when, when Noah finally built the ark, once he, once him and his family went into the ark, and when those doors were locked, you know, all they could hear were people crying and, and begging and just in straight, straight, um, uh, what's the word, man? They were in straight, um, uh, uh, I guess, turmoil, for, for lack of better words, man. Back at Luke 21, and I'm going to start at, at 35. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man because a lot of people are not going to be able to stand in front of the Son of Man when he come back, man. When Yahweh Shah make his glorious return, a lot of these people are, are going to be uh, uh, put to death, man. The Lord is going to kill a lot of people. Even before that day, a lot of people are going to die. But when the Lord actually come back, a lot of people are going to be put to death, man. And I'm going to get that in the book of Isaiah real quick because the scriptures tell you that the, the slain of the Lord shall be many
Yeah. Okay. What name called Jesus went to hell with his people? What's that? What name in the book said Jesus went to hell with his people and said to be a devil and to be a To free his people? All right, the, the one the one that you call Jesus, his name is Jehoshaphat. That's his name in the Hebrew because back during those times, there was no J. They weren't calling him Jesus. They was calling him by his Hebrew name, Jehoshaphat. And he died for his people who were the Israelites. All right? And he rose after three days. And he's coming back soon in these last days to deliver his chosen people. All right? So what you call hell... That's not an actual place where you go after you die. Hell is a condition on the planet Earth. You got heaven and hell. Those are things that happen on the Earth. All right? So according to the Bible, uh, 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 like for now, hell is what we're living in right now. Are you homeless? So you're in hell right now. Okay, here it is. You're one of the Lord's chosen people, but you ain't even got a place to stay. You see? So that's hell. All right? So uh, hell is, is on earth. When you die, you don't go to uh, uh, heaven or you don't go to hell. That's not in the Bible. That's what, that's what these pastors and these Christian, uh, Christian church, churches teach. But that's not the true doctrine. All right? When you die, you go uh, in front of the throne of the Most High. All right? You go to the spirit world. You go before the throne of the Most High. You receive your judgment. And then three to four generations later, you come back into earth by way of your father's lineage. So whoever your father is, that's the, that's the lineage of your forefather. So three to four generations, uh, uh, you were here. It's a certain thing as reincarnation. So reincarnation is in the Bible. So this goes into reincarnation, okay? So there's no thing, no thing is hell and uh, heaven. When you die, heaven and hell is on earth, all right? And, 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 and you have certain people that are already in heaven. This is their world. This is their kingdom. They own everything. They, they can't get in trouble for nothing. They can't get punished for nothing. So they're in heaven. But then you got us. A lot of our people, we're homeless. We're sick. We, we in jail for things we didn't do. You know, we are in hell right now. And this is punishment. The Lord punished us for being disobedient. All right. And so back as I was saying, how the Lord is coming back to get busy on Jake. This is a, uh, <laughs> look at this. This is uh, Isaiah chapter 66, verse 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. And what did it say in Isaiah 63? It said that the day of vengeance is in his heart. Okay, so he's angry, man. It also says how the Lord is angry with the wicked every day, man. So it says here, for by his, this is verse 16, for by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. And that word plead goes into the Hebrew word shapat, which means to judge. All right. So it says that the Lord is going to judge with all flesh, meaning all people, man. He's going to judge everybody. And it says for by fire and by his sword, what is the Lord's sword? The, the missiles, because the missiles are going to come and destroy America. The, the pestilence, the plagues, the so-called white man. The, the, uh, the angels, when they come back on the chariots, the chariots are going to be uh, shooting for fire. And this is how he's going to judge all flesh. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. So the slain meaning the kill, the, the ones that he killed, the ones that he uh, destroys, man. The slain of the Lord is going to be many in that day, man. And, every, and everything leading up to that day is going to be a lot of death on the planet, man, because these people are wicked. They're wicked. And these people think that when, when something bad happened to them, when, they, when a damn natural disaster happened, you know, like that tornado that came through last week that killed all these people, they think that that was bad. No, that was judgment from the Most High, man. Let's, let's read about that. Book of Isaiah chapter 24. Because people think when a tornado happened and it killed people, oh, that's so bad. Please pray for us. Pray for them. Pray for them, right? This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 20. No, it might be 26. Yeah, 29. Chapter 29, verse 6. Thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts with thunder and with earthquake 
and great noise with storm and tempest and a flame of devouring fire. So when it's thundering and lightning and um, you have uh, tornadoes and these bad uh, natural disasters, these bad weather uh, disasters, that's the most high bringing judgment. That's how he visits, man. And these people don't know that. They don't know the ways of the Most High. That's why the Most High, through his son, has prophets set up to tell you and teach you and tell you these things, man. Because we're in the last days, and it said that uh, 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 truth, uh, uh, there's, there should be no thing hidden that shall not be known. Roughly paraphrasing. So the Lord is revealing to you all his ways by way of his men. We're here to tell you these things, man, because y'all don't know the Bible. Y'all don't understand how to break down the Bible. Y'all still think it's a so-called man named Jesus who's a so-called white man who died for everybody on the planet. That's not in the Bible, man. That didn't happen. That's not true. All right? Let's go to the same book, chapter 28, verse 2, because it's saying the same thing. Behold, the Lord hath a mighty and strong one, which as a tempest of hail and a destroying storm and as a flood of mighty waters, overflowing shall cast down the earth with the hand. See that? And the same thing is written in uh, chapter 30. Chapter 30, verse 30. And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard. How is his voice going to be heard? By way of these natural disasters. And shall shew the lightning down of his arm with the indignation of his anger and with the flame of devouring fire with scattering and tempest and hailstones, man. People see when it rain and hail, they think it's just some natural phenomenon. Oh, that's just nature. No, that's not nature, man. That's Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. All right, Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shai is the name of His only begotten Son, man. When you see these things, these are the works of the Most High, man. These ain't just some random acts. 